Good evening, Booktube, YouTube. I don't think most of my viewers watch, I mean, have Booktube channels. Uh, so anyway, I am saying hello to anybody who's watching. I am Johnny. <laughs> That's who I am. And uh, I am broadcasting from Southwest Michigan. It is October the 23rd, 2018, it is 9.39 here in Southwest Michigan. Thought I'd make a video. I was gonna make it, I made a video last night, but uh, I should say that I have, we didn't have internet access yesterday until late this afternoon. What happened, Apparently, yesterday around 3 o'clock, everything in the house lost connection to the to AT&T. The, the telephone went dead, the TV went dead, the internet went dead. And apparently, we had an AT&T Universe tech come out. The squirrels had eaten into the wires outside, and we were disconnected to the outside outside world. At first, yesterday, when everything went dead, I thought there had been a massive cyber cyber attack. So I turned on the radio, and there was nothing. So I thought, well, and uh, so anyway. Uh, when Carol got up, we used her her cell phone to call our son. And anyway, to make a long story short, long story short, it's all fixed. And now we're running. So I anyway, I did make a video last night because I was sitting here by myself, and I thought, well, eventually I'd be able to download the video when we got back online, but. I deleted the video last night. I made some crazy photo, you know, I was taking photos and I was going to delete the photo and I deleted everything that was on the in the in the camera. But it was just a crazy video of me just rambling about about my existence in the wasteland and And it was a Monday Reads. Today is a Tuesday. So I call this a Tuesday Reads. I'm, this is a catch-up. So yesterday I volunteered at the library used bookstore, The Book Nook. And I brought home two used books. Well, first of all, I read at The Book Nook when I wasn't helping people. I read the stories so far of Deborah Eisenberg. I've read almost 200 pages out of this. What this is, this is an earlier, what's in this volume is two of her early, early short story book collections. Her first one was Transactions in a Foreign Currency, and then the second collection was titled Under the 82nd Airborne. And these came out, the first collection came out it says here in 1986 and I think the next one came out in 1992. She has a new collection out that's you can see book reviews. She has a new collection out but I wanted to start with her earlier short stories. So I've been re I've been really enjoying these short stories. It's been really impressed with her writing, and uh, so I recommend them. So I brought home from the book nook yesterday Joseph Heller, who, who's a very famous American writer, who wrote Catch Twenty Two. This is his novel, Portrait of an Artist as an Old Man. When I came home, I was cataloging this in my library things site, and I already have it. So I take it back to the book nook this coming Friday when I volunteer again. And then I brought home something I didn't have, but I collect the writings of Sebastian Barry 
And this is his novel, The Temporary Gentleman, which I did not have in my Sebastian Barry collection. He's a British writer. I think he's British. Nope, he's Irish. He's an Irish writer. So uh, I started reading this at the book nook and I almost wanted to get really into it, but I got to finish other things before I start another novel. And then when I got home from the book nook, it was a Monday afternoon. Carol had gone to bed because she had to sleep at work that night. And I had a phone call from my pharmacist saying that my prescription could be picked up. And so I, since I had my pants on and the, and I was dressed, I went and picked up the prescription. But before I did, I stopped at the Goodwill, which is right across the street from the store and the pharmacy. And I picked up Rin Tin Tin, The Life and the Legend by Susan Orlean. Now, for those who are young, probably didn't grow up watching Rin Tin Tin or I Love Lassie. But Rin Tin Tin was a show on TV that I watched uh, growing up as a boy. And this is about, um, so begins, uh, he believed the dog was immortal. So begins Susan Orland's sweeping, powerfully moving account of Rin Tin Tin's journey from an orphan puppy to a movie star and international icon. Orland, a staff writer at The New Yorker, who has been hailed as a national treasure by the Washington Post, spent nearly 10 years researching and reporting her most captivating book to date, The Story of a Dog Who Was Born in 1918 and Never Died. So I found that at Goodwill, and I found this American Catholic, The Saints and Sinners Who Built America's Most Powerful Church by Charles Morris. This is the story of the Catholic Church in America. So, so I got those two at the Goodwill, and then I went and got my prescription, and I came home, and I was on the internet, and then everything died. <laughs> so, oh, I forgot. I had another, I mentioned this book by Susan Orland, Rent Tin Tin. I also have a book by her, the Bullfighter Checks Her Makeup. And what this is, uh, these are like uh, profiles of people, like short essays of profiles. She must have wrote for the New Yorker or other magazines. So I had that already in our collection. So, uh, this morning, for my morning devotions, I read a little bit of The Rise of Reform System, The Intellectual Heritage of William Ames by Jan Van Zitt. I really don't know what to read in the mornings lately. Um, I'm kind of out of it in the mornings lately. But I read this this morning and a little bit of Sketch of Christian Catechism by William Ames. I'm waiting for volume six of the works of William Perkins to come out this, hopefully this month, who was the father of 17th century English Puritanism, but we'll see. As far as in the afternoon, today I read Patches from Pluto, Lost and Found in the Mississippi Delta. I read this almost all day this afternoon. I wrote a lot in my October 2018 diary. I wrote five pages of pure dribble, <laughs> pure nothingness, pure dung. But I don't know why. I just sat here writing and reading Patches from Pluto, Lost and Found, Mrs. B. Delta. As I mentioned in the past, uh, we went to seminary in Jackson, Mississippi uh, back in the 80s. And uh, so we lived in Mississippi for at least four or five years and went to seminary there. And, and uh, so, we, as I've mentioned, 
on Sundays I was a pulpit supply and I preached in country churches in Arkansas, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. And I went to students that I went to seminary with were Southern boys. Most of them were from the South. And the professors were all from the South. And uh, so we had a really interesting experience living in the South and uh, doing things in the South and going and went to Vicksburg and saw the Vicksburg major Civil War battle and things like that. And uh, we enjoy, when we lived in Jackson, Mississippi, Bethany was born there. Our daughter was born in Jackson, Mississippi. And our kids were little when we lived in Jackson. And there were, I remember taking the kids to the Jackson Zoo and uh, Natchez Trace. And it was, a, it was a nice time. Seminary was very difficult. I probably had some small breakdowns. <laughs> it was very difficult for me, but uh, the Lord gave grace. Uh, I also have been reading why I read why I read the series Pleasure of Books by Wendy Lesser, and I also have been reading a new book, uh, One Thousand Books to Read: A Life Changing List Before You Die by James. Missed it. So I've been reading these. Uh, I got this in the mail, I think, today. Yeah, I got this in the mail today. I had ordered it a while. I had ordered it. And uh, I looked through it. I went through the whole volume. And I most, I say at least, at least 75% of the books I either have read or have known about. But I like the way, it's just, what I like is, is that when you read about a book, it mentions uh, what, when, like, um, it's amazing how many of these books I have in my library, our library. But it mentions uh, what to read also by the writer in further reading. That's what I find interesting. Uh, not so much the, the the major article, but at the end, uh, like it mentions here, for example, it mentions Arctic Dreams by Barry Lopez. Now, a while back, I did a video of my Barry Lopez collection, and Arctic Dreams is one of my favorite books by Barry Lopez. So it's called Arctic Dreams, Imagination, Desire in a northern landscape. So it has an article about that. And then it says, what nature, travel, when, 1986 award, National Book Award, 1986, also by Lopez, has published a number of nonfiction books, most nobly wolves and men. Well, I just showed you, I had picked up a second copy of Wolves in Men by Barry Lopez. So I have two copies of this. I just found this one a couple of weeks ago. Mine was another, this is a different edition. Uh, so it has like, you know. So it mentions that. Uh, it has several story collections, including Desert Notes, 1976, River Notes, which I have, Field Notes. Now that I don't, I'm not sure about which was published in 1994, I don't know. But it says, Try Desert Solitaire, A Season in the Wilderness by Edward Abbey. Well, I just showed in one of my videos in the past my Edward Abbey collection, which I showed Desert Solitaire, A Season in the Wilderness. And then he mentioned Snow Leopard by Peter Matheson. Well, I've shown in my past videos uh, my Peter Matheson collection, and one of my favorite books by Peter, Math Lath Peter Matheson was Snow Leopard. And then Coming Into the Country by John McPee. Well, I showed you in a past video our big John McPee collection. So that's what I like about the books they recommend at the end. Uh, so that's what I like about this book. Um, some of the books I didn't know about but um, 
so I got this in the mail, been looking at it, going to Amazon, <laughs> looking things up. But I like the way it's, I like the, uh, the way it's designed. It's, uh, it's a nice book if you're a book lover. So, 1,000 books to read, a life-changing list before you die. It also has in the, in the back uh, a 1,000 book checklist. <laughs> and then it has, it has a general index. And then it has right towards the end different categories of books family read it louds listen up terrific auto 12 12 terrific auto books uh it mentions uh offbeat escapes singular self portraits like the education of henry adams M memoirs of a dutiful Dutiful Daughter by Simeon de Bouvier, Earthly Paradise by Colette, Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank, uh, and different things. Uh, Speak Memory by Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Confessions by Razu, Razu, Malcolm X, Autobiography of Malcolm X. So things like that. Uh, cities in fiction, in fiction, like uh, the Power Broker by Robert A. Car Carwell, which is about New York City. I just came across that just today when I was looking for something down the lower level. Anyway, check it out if you're into, if you're a bibliophile. You want you collect books on books. So yeah, I've been reading Why I Read, A Serious Pleasure of Books by Wendy Lesser, Dispatches, Dispatches from Pluto, reading stories so far of Deborah Essenberg, writing in my diary. Today I ended on page 876 I have written for the year 2018. We're coming to the end of October. The, I have to show, make a video of preparing my November 2018 diary. So that's it. That's what's going on in my book world. Tomorrow's a Wednesday. I might mow the lawn tomorrow if the weather prevails. I was going to do it today, but I kept waiting all day for the a t man to come and get us connected to the wasteland to the uh, to the American Empire so this is Tuesday Reads I hope you had a good weekend had a good Monday and I don't know when I'll make a video again but I'll sign off thank you for the comments thank you for the new subscribers do praying that do I, I do pray that you're all doing well out there. Until next time, bye.